Hi friends. Well, the first part of this video is going to be about me fixing my son's macerator pump. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. First thing we need is that box down there. This was about 10 days ago when my back was still hurting. I'm wearing my back brace. A macerator pump is a thing that grinds up sewage from the toilet and pumps it a little bit uphill to get to his uh, septic sewer system. And uh, it stopped working. Uh, and why would I know how to work on a macerator pump? Well, let me tell you, because it's a story about travel, and the name of the channel is JC Travel Stories. This would be back when we were boaters. We had a macerator pump in the boat, and twice it stopped working. So what happened the first time was that somebody in the party, the family, swallowed a cherry seed, and the cherry seed hit the impeller, and the grinder and the blade and it stopped. And so I wound up hanging by my knees with my head down in the bills, dismantling the connections to the macerator pump. The second time it happened, um, it was a tampon. And so we made up this rule that uh, when you have a macerator pump, there's only two things that should go in there. One of them is septic safe toilet paper and the other one is anything you ate first as long as you don't swallow a cherry seed. <laughs> uh, anyway, his macerator pump stopped working and so we taken it apart and putting it back together and cleaning it out and uh, we've made sure that uh, everybody knows the rules about macerator pumps for the future. Uh, let me tell you what I did in the boat though. Uh, after doing that the second time, I decided to build my own macerator pump, so I took a cast iron centrifugal pump and I hooked it up direct drive to a Ford V8 <laughs> starter motor. <laughs> Not only could you um, throw any darn thing you wanted in the toilet, it would grind it up. Uh, it was a through the uh, hull um, port where we dumped. Now, this was many, 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 many years ago when we would just dump in the ocean. And there are uh, sent, uh, sentimentalities about that these days about polluting the water. But hey, I'm talking about probably between 40 and 50 years ago. We just pumped it overboard. Everybody did it. Uh, don't give me a crap about it. Was that a pun? <laughs> anyway, uh, I had trim tabs on the boat, which would turn the boat uh, or tip the boat. And so if I did my trim tabs, I could get that port above the water line. Everybody in the boat club knew not to travel on Jerry's port side because I could pump whatever comes out of the toilet <laughs> about 40 feet. <laughs> anyway, uh, kind of a disgusting story, but that's what you're getting today. The second part of this video is going to be about me installing um, a another kind of pump. This is a sump pump, and we're putting it down in the bottom of a, a rain catchment uh, tank so that uh, my son can water his gardens without using his well. My first car, my first Jeep. Let's talk about my Jeep. This thing, uh, I don't know what it weighs, but it's really heavy. This is all solid metal. My first car, I got this when I was 10 years old in 1954. Nine years old in 1954. Anyway, uh, it was built by my uncle, 
Carl Robbie. And he lived in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and we lived out in Mission, South Dakota, a couple hundred miles away. And when we would go to Sioux Falls as kids to visit them, um, they lived in a brick house, which was just amazing to us, coming from out there on the prairie where everything was built out of wood or sod. And they had television. Oh, my God, we saw Howdy Doody. We didn't have television in Mission until I was 14. But uh, in the early 1950s, we would go there. We're little kids. And he had several of these. He called them sidewalk cars. Now, um, Disneyland was being built in 1955. And one of the family stories is that he was building these as a prototype for Autotopia at Disneyland. But um, I can't prove that. It's just an old family story. My cousin Butch and I, he had several of these. Uh, Uncle Carl did. Uh, one of them looked like a 1953 Chevy. And this one was an Army Jeep. And originally it was painted Army Green. Uh, we would drive them around the sidewalk on the block that he lived, called them sidewalk cars. They actually drive, they steer, they had a uh, accelerator, they had a brake. You see the brake pedal down there is a piece of half inch water pipe welded onto a lever. Had a Briggs and Stratton engine, belt drive, and when you stepped on the brake, this came down and hit the belt to stop you. One wheel chain drive. It went about 10 miles an hour. And uh, my dad used to say, when you started that in Mission, South Dakota, it was like a kid magnet. Every kid in town would come a running in for a ride. So my son's had it in his garage for a while. And, you know, it's old. It's, dang. 60 some years old anyway it's the wheels still roll got an extra spare tire there it used to have battery operated headlights in the front but my younger brother roger he ran into mom's plymouth fury 1957 busted off the headlights I talked to Peter the other day about uh, making that an electric thing with some golf cart parts, but he said no. He's got a guy, he thinks he's going to restore it to its original condition. Going to need to get the seat covers redone. Anyway, my first car, 1954. Well, thanks for indulging me in my reminiscing. Isn't that fun? Uh, I guess that's why I think that all of my life I've been able to drive anything. Uh, the next big driving experience, of course, was going to work out on my mother's cousin's ranch in uh, Keppa Hall, South Dakota or Nebraska. I don't remember. It's right on the line. And... Um, there he taught me to drive tractors and a grain truck with a 10-speed transmission and a two-speed rear end. And uh, I guess that's why I think after all these years, I can still drive that. Some fool doesn't have enough sense not to risk life and limb crawling over the fence instead of getting a stool. Who would that be? I'm working on hooking a pump up to a 2,500-gallon rainwater catchment tank 
it takes all the water off the roof when it rains, and we're going to water the yard with it. We're going to need a couple more pieces. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, a union, that's a thing that puts pipes together that you can take apart later if you need to rearrange the pipes or something. Mm -hmm. But the reason for this one is that if you need to pull the pump, mm -hmm. you don't want to have to saw all this stuff apart to get it apart. Mm -hmm. Also, for the support, I've been thinking, you know, a board there and all of that. Mm -hmm. What if, I mean, we'll put the screen there, okay? What if I got a T and just put one, the bottom of the T, I don't mean a T, I mean a plus sign. Mm -hmm. a plus. Mm -hmm. The bottom goes to the pump, the top goes to the hose. Mm -hmm. And the two sides just go out about this far, and they're capped. Yeah. And it's the support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it might also be a good idea. Like, you might want to hook it up to that thing one of these days. So one of those capped things could yeah. go off that direction exactly. at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to the hardware store for more pipe parts. You want to go along? Is the coffee shop on the way? The, why? Do you have six bucks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to spend it on coffee. Uh, it can be. You want to go along? Yes. All righty. I'm getting ready. So this is the pump we put down there. And it was about 60 bucks at Harbor Freight. There's the completed construction, uh, about $60 for the pump and about another $60 for piping. And we are able to run a sprinkler out of the rain catchment 2,500 gallon tank. And... This is how it's working. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.